I think about my dad growing up, I certainly think about that seriousness. But very few people get to see. <laughs> He's funny, weird, and really playful. God help us. In 1981, HIV-AIDS was evolving rapidly and frighteningly. There was anger at the government's response. When you got sick, you were gone fast. It's affecting you now. Yeah. Why? Post-traumatic stress syndrome. When COVID hit, he became this target. My dad said, we're going to get through this whole thing, and he's held back. You don't do it because you want to make money. You don't do it for the glory. You do it because you care. When you're involved in a race to stop a horrible disease, you always feel you're not doing things quickly enough. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, John, Janet. Thank you for joining me this morning about your new documentary, Fauci, streaming on Disney+. Plus. You know, I, the country is fascinated with this man. Uh, you know, your documentary covers Dr. Fauci's professional life, his response uh, to the outbreaks of HIV-8, SARS, Ebola, COVID-19. So John, Dr. Fauci has not only become a celebrity in American culture, but he's someone who we look to for, for truth and guidance, isn't he? Uh, he sure is, and for good reason. I mean, Dr. Fauci has um, had a very long career. He is 80 years old, he'll soon be 81 years old. Um, he has been at the National Institutes of Health for over 50 years, um, and he runs the most important, one of the most important um, institutes there, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Um, he is the man who has guided our nation's response to a number of pandemics, as you mentioned, um, and who is leading the research efforts across our, our country and the world. Um, when these outbreaks occur, the research efforts to find treatments and most importantly, to find the vaccines that are going to save our lives. And Janet, you know, first and foremost, he's a scientist, he's a doctor. How does he handle the spotlight since COVID began? Because he was thrust into the American uh, spotlight. Um, I think uh, Tony and Dr. Fauci really has a unique ability to focus on what is important. I think most of us would be incredibly distracted all the time by all the, all the praise and all the criticism, which both, I often um, describe it as like going into the Roman forum. You know, people are throwing roses and garbage at the same time. Um, and um, Dr. Fauci is very, very focused. Um, by being around him, John and I saw that he really um, thinks um, this is the scientific question I've got to answer today. This is the um, question as a physician in caring um, for the American people I need to answer today. And he zeroes in on that. And, and John, why was it important to show Dr. Fauci outside of news interviews and press conferences to humanize him, to show him with his family and where it all began? Well, it's for the reasons you just said. Um, this is a man who uh, the entire world um, has come to know. Prior to that, people in uh, Washington, people in the scientific community knew about Dr. Fauci. Some of the activists uh, from the AIDS era knew about Dr. Fauci, but he was not a household name. Suddenly he is. Um, and he is one of the most important voices in our nation um, communicating these, you know, about life-saving information. Um, so, and it's undeniable that he became a pop icon. Um, and so, well, who is the man? If this is, if there's such awareness of him, um, it seems like people should know who the man really is. What is this complex, interesting, rich history um, that he has? What is this relationship uh, he has with his family, his incredible family? Um, and what is, what are the forces that shaped him to be uh, the human being that he is today. And Janet, uh, when approaching him for the idea of the documentary, he seems like a very shy and very personal man. Uh, was he on board? Was it something that uh, he was he was eager to do? Or he seems like he just wants not to be left alone, but you know what I mean? He just seems like a very reserved man. No, he... Um... We approached him before the pandemic, which I think made it easier. Um, uh, and, um, and he thought about it. And then he said, because I said, someone, you are the longest serving um, public health, public servant in America. Someone should do a film about you. And he thought about it. And then he said, yes. And then I will add that as the pandemic um, started and then really got intense very quickly, he said to both of us, um, my work is what I care about. This is extra. 
So I um, will not do anything that interferes with my work. We, that must always become my first priority. You know, and John, I'm a fan of Dr. Fauci. You know, I'm a news hound. I watch, I watch uh, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. I can't get enough of it. So he's, he's always been first and foremost, you know, for this, you know, this pandemic and his leadership. But it's upsetting to know that, especially with his interview and your documentary, that half this country has a negative opinion of Dr. Fauci. He's either a hero or a villain. Um, yes, uh, that is unfortunately true. Um, I, I think that we have to think of Dr. Fauci as the signal um, amidst the noise. Um, and what is uh, causing that noise um, is a very complex answer um, that we couldn't even begin to uh, unpack uh, right now. Um, but there is a lot of noise in the culture. Why does it exist? And you know, what is its ultimate purpose? I, I can't begin to say, but I am so grateful that you know, that you are able to, you know, hear Dr. Fauci amidst all that noise, that he has as many platforms as he does have to get that signal out um, about, uh, you know, what it's going to take to end this pandemic so that we can get back to uh, the most normal life possible and what's going to save the most, you know, lives possible. And that's the vaccine um, and increasingly getting those vaccines around the world. Jeff, if I could leap in, is I think occasionally um, being around Dr. Fauci, you could see him be confused because he he thought of the virus as a common enemy to all of us, Republicans, independents, Democrat, men, women, everyone. Um, and I think sometimes he he was a he worked with Republicans and Democrats through 50 years, um, and he was a little confused why people didn't understand that it was a common enemy, not um, a partisan em enemy. And our final moments here too, uh, John, does he have a sense of humor? Because I think when I saw on Saturday Night Live when Brad Pitt did his impression of him, everybody was concerned. What did Dr. Fauci think of that? Because that was just a classic moment. Well, first of all, he loved it. Um, and he does have a great sense of humor. He also has a foul mouth, um, as people will soon discover watching the film on Disney+. <laughs> Plus. Um, and, you know, it's he's he is a lot of fun to be around because he... You know, he's, he's, he tells good stories uh, and he knows how to laugh at himself. Um, and, you know, right now, um, I think that's what's helping him get through some of the more difficult days. Well, John, Janet, congratulations on a very insightful documentary. I'm a fan of Dr. Fauci. Now he's even a bigger hero to me than before. So congratulations and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Thank